Elden Ring, probably one of my favorite games of all time. This video was pretty much just therapy for me after that video I made on The Hunted. I'll keep this short and sweet because there are definitely some of you that don't know anything about this game, and I will explain it throughout the video. Like the title says, I will be playing this game for 100 days, and in that 100 days I will try to get all six endings, because every time you beat the game, you get to keep all your weapons and stats, and you get to play through it again. On the first playthrough, I will be doing as much as I can, fighting as many bosses, completing as many dungeons as I can, etc. After that, I will be running different builds, mimicking different bosses, trying to get different endings. I had so much fun recording this, so if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe, and settle in. Let's get started. America the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, America's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. And one other whom grace would again bless. A tarnished of no renown. Cross the fog to the lands between to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. At the start of day one, I decided I would be rocking the bandit build. Definitely not so I could spam bleed, I don't know what you're talking about. I got finished setting up my character and began making my way towards the tutorial boss. If you could even call him that, he's supposed to kill you. There's not much you can do. You know, usually waking up in a dark cave with no money left in your pockets is a bad sign. The first thing I did was go through the tutorial cave, and I'm not gonna lie, that ended up being a huge waste of my time. That's right, boy. Move those legs, shed those carbs. Throughout the map, you're gonna find these gold sparkly little thingies. They're called graces. They're pretty much resting points where you can recharge all of your health and anything that you may have spent, like heals. It's also where this lovely lady comes in. I 
offer you an accord. We talk to her and we get the ability to level up, which, you know, leveling up in games is cool. It means good things. Next up on the agenda was Highway Robbery. I just opened a random chest I found and got a flail. I couldn't even use it yet because my dexterity stat was too low, but oh well. Anything's better than this knife, man. I just need to, I need to get something better. Hey, this guy is a pretty cool knife. Do you think I can steal it from him? All right, understandable. Have a nice day. You weren't that bad. You're really just a scrub in the end. Easy peasy. I'm sorry, I wasn't familiar with your game. With the help of the man in the goofy looking hat, I finally killed the invader and got his knife. I then ventured into the nearby cave and committed war crimes as I descended into its depths. Personal belongings, huh? You scheming little thief. The gods demand repentance. Wait, wait, please. I surrender. Quite flagonal. Wow, Patches, that's so cool of you to be honest in your moment of emotional vulnerability. I really wish there were more people like you. Well, okay, war crimes aside, now that I have a pretty cool weapon, I think it's time to go kill my first real boss. Foul tarnished. In search of the Elden Ring. Emboldened by the flame of ambition. Margaret? More like Margaret Thatcher, am I right, guys? <laughs> I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Well, thou art of passing skill. Warrior blood must truly run in thy veins. Thanks to all the juicy runes I got from that fight, I'm able to level up a couple of times and I head down to the Weeping Peninsula. I know of an even better weapon that I can go get though, it's down at this weird thingy, they call it an Evergale. I don't know if I said that wrong. A bloodhound knight, huh? How bad could you possibly be? Oh, that's pretty bad. Yep, take that poopy head, give me your sword. Then I finally make it to the Weeping Peninsula, where I find this blind crying lady. Turns out this game has a sense of humor too. Yeah, I'm gonna get cancelled. She tells me of a castle to the south where the servants staged a coup, as one does. So it's time to go down there and check it out for myself. Seems like you have a little bit of a stray mutt problem. That's fine, cause- oh, you got two dogs, okay. I can handle two dogs. There are three things that are certain in life. Death, taxes, and getting your ass kicked by dogs in a Soulsborne game. With some extra pain and suffering, I finally made my way through Castle Morn and made it to the bottom of the cliffs on the other side, where there was this weird lion dude thingy. He hits really hard, but so do I. Then it was just time for me to go around hitting the dungeons and bosses that are around Weeping Peninsula. You're gonna need a lot of pesticide to kill this thing, and I happen to have some pesticide with me. It's called a sword. On day four, it was into a smithing stone mine. I would need smithing stones in order to upgrade my weapons. Upgrading weapons was entirely necessary, especially when you get to the later game bosses and need to do lots of damage. So, because of all the time I spent in the caverns, I was able to upgrade my Bloodhound Fang. Then it was back to Limgrave, where I hit up another catacomb and killed the dude at the bottom of it. After that, I headed east and came across this dude. He warned me not to kill the Mariner nearby. 
So he killed the mariner nearby. Then I went and talked to him. Then killed him too, nerd. I traveled to the south to this church where I grabbed a very important flask that would give me buffs for boss fights. I grabbed the other half of the Limgrave map and then headed to this place called Fort Height. There was a knight here that had a very scary bloody sword, but I happened to have an even scarier bloodier sword. Day five, I headed back to the castle that I killed Margaret Thatcher in front of. Oh wow, look at this, a dark room. I can't imagine FromSoft would ever hide a really strong enemy me in this room. You know, I live for chaos. Chaos is my thing, and running through this courtyard and pissing everybody off brings me nothing but joy. I did have a close call with this omen right next to the grace. I hadn't activated it yet, so if I died here, I'd have to make the long trek back. Then it was time for me to fight my first boss that had a shard of the Elden Ring. Mighty dragon. Thou'rt a true born heir. Lend me thy strength, O kindred. Deliver me unto greater heights. Well. the Lord. I command thee kneel. I am the Lord of all that is golden. of dragons. Lend me thy strength. I'm not gonna lie, Godric isn't that hard, especially when you fought him a bunch of times, so it only took me two tries to kill the bozo. Now it was on to the next area, Liernia of the Lakes. I found this super whiny magical nerd in a nearby church and decided to kill him too. Take that, dork. As I made my way down into the lake, I found this woman with scoliosis telling me that someone had stolen a medallion or something. I wasn't really paying attention. I did follow her directions to the place where the dude lived and, uh, yeah, beat the crap out of him. I returned the medallion to the hunchback woman of Notre Dame before continuing on my way. My next destination happened to be this little underground swamp area. It's pretty gross here. We're also just gonna ignore the multitude of crucified dudes here. I came across this feller disguised as a pot, so I killed him too because, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. I got half of the Halig Tree medallion from him, which isn't important now, but it will be later. Then I killed this omen killer that was nearby, and you know what my least favorite part about this boss fight is? 
Dogs. Spoiler alert. It's the dogs. I killed a scarab beetle and it gave me this spell called Blood Flame. This would be really cool later, but I continued on my way and found a dragon. I picked up the key right behind him and tried to fight the dragon, but, you know, humans and dragons don't really get along. I found another Evergale and killed some troll with a giant magic stick. He was a chump. I also forgot to mention this, but there's a guy at the very beginning of the game that tells you you have no woman, that you get no game. And they are right. But now he's outside of this church and he actually has a very interesting quest that I want to partake in. He tells me to go see the Two Fingers, which would be at the Round Table Hold. Round Table Hold was this place I got access to a while ago and forgot to mention for some reason. Think of it as your temporary home in the lands between. We're fine here. Everything's fine. So these two fingers I have to talk to are literally just that. Two giant fingers. Well, I mean, technically I talked to this old lady who speaks on behalf of them, but you know what? It, it's the same thing. Seek. Another of its kind to become Elden Lord. Let the words of the fingers guide you. Cheers, I'll drink to that, bro. After talking with the two fingers, I went back to Vare, the guy who told me I have no game. They'd get mad, but he's not really wrong. Then I began invading, which the simplest way to explain it, it's multiplayer and you're there to go bully somebody else. One of these people actually set up a trap for me and it was really enjoyable. He tried to put me to sleep with a sword and he had a buddy with a giant cannon on the roof and would just fire. I lost the third battle as well, but the dude paid his respects, so I can't really be mad. Now that I had invaded enough people, the dude wants me to go soak a cloth in a maiden's blood. What? So I went to the nearby four belfries and went to visit an old friend. Yeah, how does it feel to be the one bullied this time, Mr. Hands? Once all that is completed, Vare gives you this little medallion to use to go to somewhere else. I would like to go to that other place, but for now I'm just gonna kill Vare because he's annoying and mean. After that, I bought the finger seal, which would allow me to do some spells, like the blood flame I mentioned earlier. Then it was into the magic school of Raya Lucaria, and I went to the very bottom and got killed by a virgin abductor. On purpose, believe it or not. Because if you let it kill you, it takes you to a place called Volcano Manor. Listen, just roll with it. I'm just as confused as you are. Oh, a bus room. This can't be bad. Oh, you don't say. Okay, maybe it was a little ahead of my time for that, so I used that medallion Vary gave me and went to a different location. I traveled to this place where I could farm a bunch of runes because the enemies were super strong and I needed to use blood flame. Day 7, it was time to go into another smithing stone mine. This time, it had even better smithing stones, so I could get even better upgrades for my Bloodhound Fang. At the bottom of this mine, there was a boss called a Crystallion, and when you kill it, it gives you this thing called a Bell Bearing, which allows you to actually buy smithing stones instead of having to go find them. Then it was back to the magic school of Raya Lucaria to fight the next story progression boss, which was... Drumroll, please. A dog. Please, someone make it stop. I managed to first try the dog and then continued on my way. On my way to fight the next shard-bearing boss, there's this knight dude, and he's probably my least favorite NPC in the game. <laughs> Fortunately, I know his biggest weakness, elevator shafts. Yeah, I bet you feel real smart, don't you? Then, it was time to fight the next shard-bearer. Little Calver, I'll soon birth thee anew, a sweeting, fresh and pure.
My beloved, have no fear. I will hold thee. Patience. Ye will be countless born forever and Upon my name is Rani the Witch. Mother's rich slumber shall not be disturbed by thee. Foul trespasser. Send word far and wide. Of the last queen of Caria, Renala of the Full Moon. And the majesty of the night she conjureth. Yeah, when you have a big old sword, she's not very hard. The rest of the day would be spent clearing out dungeons and field bosses. Day 8, I went into some very large caves, which happened to be super annoying. Towards the end of the day, though, I did find this dude called Aidan, or something, and, uh, he was fat, and I killed him. He's a chump. Day 8, more dungeon crawling, yippee! I hate this. Of course, with more dungeons comes more pain. That's where the last comment comes from. After I finished all the caves and catacombs in Lyrnia, yeah, it was time to go to Caria Manor, the last area I hadn't conquered yet. At this point, I was pretty much overleveled for most of these places, so beating them was a piece of cake. The boss? Kind of a pushover. Also, this weapon might be overpowered, I'm not sure. After I defeated the Caria Manor boss, it was time to go to Ronnie's Rise, where I would start the quest line. Bari was wrong. I will be getting a maiden, so uh, joke's on him. Day 10, it was into the rotten lands of Kaelid so I could get to Gale Tunnel. Here, I looted, pilfered, and exploited the weak. You know, just an average Tuesday on the Choofy channel. There was also this magma worm boss, which is like a dragon thingy, I'm not exactly sure, but it vigor checked me a couple times. So, with great care, I finally managed to beat him. Then it was on to the Divine Tower of Kaelid, which wasn't very divine in my opinion, because once you get inside, you have to parkour your way down. And let's just say that Soul's games and parkour don't get along very well. Even when I got to the bottom though, I got beaten into a fine puree by the godskin apostle that lives there. So I just beat the frick out of a tree and got ready to enter the next area. But before I could actually enter the next area, I would have to go through another dungeon. So that's what he did on day 11. Oh, the bats! Not the bats! The boss for this dungeon was another magma worm, but because I had already fought one previously with the same exact move set, this one was a piece of cake. Then it was on to the next area. The Altus Plateau. I immediately ran into the nearest smithing stone mine and went crazy. I got the somber smithing stones 5 and 6, which had allowed me to upgrade my already overpowered Bloodhound Fang two more times. Alright, nerds, it's time for a rematch. <laughs> I should touch grass. I fought some more field bosses for the rest of the day. That's about it. Day 12, it was time for another catacomb, and <laughs> oh man, I, I struggled. Fortunately though, when I finally got to the boss of the area, it, it was just a complete pushover. Then it was time for another catacomb, and the area boss for this one was the most bizarre combination of enemies I'd ever seen. I still kicked the crap out of them, but that doesn't change the fact that it was weird. My next destination was a castle sitting in the middle of a poison lake. Lovely. The boss at the top of this castle was really cool. He had the coolest sword in the world, and it also really hurt. He also had a really cool shield that also hurt. Upon death, he gave me his sword, which unfortunately I couldn't use yet, but hey, this would be pretty cool. 
Then I began making my way up the volcano. I mean, it hardly looks like a volcano, but remember, everything is weird in the lands between. Day 13, I visited my first super dungeon, which is called a hero's grave. Hero's graves will typically have these large rolling dudes in them, and they really hurt if you get hit. <laughs> I clearly didn't have enough health to make it to the boss alive, so I decided to come back later. I made it to the very top of the mountain, and I fought this big old falling star beast. I put up a good fight, but I was really no match for him. I collected the Mount Gelmir map and continued on my way down the hill until I found an ulcerated tree spirit boss. Everybody gangsta until the tree starts moving like cooked pasta. Once I killed that, I continued even further down the hill. This is when I got invaded by a girl named Anastasia, who confessed her undying love to me. I rejected her promptly, though, because she's simply not my type. Then I just walked right into Volcano Manor and talked to the owner, or something. I don't know exactly what she does here. She gave me a key, which I used to get into a room to talk to some more people, and picked up a letter that was telling me to go kill someone. So I went to Limgrave and killed him. Went back to Volcano Manor and got another letter, and I went to go kill that guy too. Then it was time for another letter, but unfortunately, they were in an area that I hadn't unlocked yet. You know, despite everybody being so welcoming inside the manor, it seems like everybody outside of the manor doesn't seem to like me as much. I spent a lot of time on a long, painful run that saw me going to the very depths of the manor all the way back up for... Wait for it. A shortcut. Then it was time to fight the Godskin Apostle's counterpart, the Godskin Noble. Managed to beat him in two tries because I have a very funny sword that does a funny amount of damage. After that, I began making my way towards the next rune bearer. The game gives you a special weapon to actually kill this thing with, which is what I would be using for this entire video, because fighting it normally is not something I like doing.
my gosh, that took so much time. With the crazy amount of runes I got from winning this fight, I poured them all into vigor so I could have more health. Day 15, I went back to the bottom of the Kaled Divine Tower and got revenge on the Godskin Apostle that was there. I got a really cool sword from a chest behind him that I would probably definitely never use. I also got revenge on that one dragon that was guarding the key from earlier. Then I got a bit more bold and tried to fight this Scarlet Rot Dragon down in Kaled, but uh, <laughs> I was gonna have to wait, oh my gosh. Then I accidentally ran into this other boss in the middle of this Scarlet Rot Swamp and uh, man, oh I don't know why I struggled, but I struggled. Then it was into another smithing stone tunnel, and the boss at the bottom was a smaller version of the Falling Star Beast, and upon death it gives me another bell bearing for somber smithing stone. I, I would explain the difference, but that's a lot of work. Then I made my way down to Redmain Castle, which I would have to be here later for another shard bearer fight, but for now I don't think I was strong enough. D16 I was fighting some more Kaled bosses, including this super annoying Erdtree avatar. I don't know why I struggled with him, I just did. I parkoured into a nearby rise and got a memory stone. These were important so I could use more spells later on in my future playthroughs. Then it was on to Altus to kill some more bosses. Or in total, one of them gave me another bell bearing for somber smithing stones. Then I decided I would try my hand at another hero's grave, but before I could get inside I would have to kill this black knife assassin first which wasn't too hard. There were some puzzles I had to solve while I was down in the hero's grave on day 17 with these shadow monsters. I would have to lead them into these circles of light where I could finally get them in a state where I can hit them. I killed the area boss and then headed back outside to the top of a nearby hill where I fought a dragon, a giant electro dragon. This guy vigor checked me so many times, I don't even want to talk about it. After I finally, finally killed him, it was time to enter Leyendel. Well, not actually Leyendel, just the outer wall. I went back down to Kaelid on day 18 and tried to cheese the knight's cavalry. The idea was to get him to jump over the wall and off the edge, but I, I guess I'm a skill issue because I couldn't get it done. Then I finally decided that now was a better time than any to go and try to fight the next shard bearer. In order to do this, I would have to start the Radon Festival. Are you good and prepared, young chum? The festival begin. Before we begin, allow me to paint you the full picture. General Radan is cursed ever to wander. Eaten from the inside by Melania's scarlet rot, his wits are long gone. Now he gathers the corpses of former friends and foes alike, gorging on them like a dog.
I forgot to record most of day 19, which actually makes me really sad and you'll soon see why. The giant meteor that you see in the end of the cutscene after we're done actually blew a giant crater in Limgrave, and that's where I went down into. In this crater, you find a boss fight where you fight a copy of yourself called the Mimic Tear, and I spent so much time fighting him hand to hand because I thought it would be so funny for content, and I forgot. I forgot to record. Day 20, I lit a bunch of fires so I could begin a boss fight with a Canadian, which I beat first try. I made my way deeper into the nearby city so I could get this really important object that I would need for Ronnie's quest line. My dry spell of having no maidens would finally come to an end, I'm sure of it. After collecting it, I went back to Ronnie's rise and talked to her where I gave her it. Wow, she was so surprised, so proud of me. But now I gotta go to a nearby rise so I can go to another underground area where I found this doll of Ronnie. I forgot to bring the jar, unfortunately, so I had to settle for talking to her. She gets annoyed at this and tells me to go kill somebody for her. Fine. So I killed this dude called the Baleful Shadow and then uh, continued on my way, I guess, to this giant humongous lake of Scarlet Rock. I ran around and raised some platforms by hitting these buttons so in the future it would be easier for me to traverse the lake. Then I went back to Lierny of the Lakes real fast to grab this spell that would clear all of my status effects. In other words, if I had Scarlet Rot, I could just use this and then I wouldn't have it anymore. Then I ran into this boss right in the middle of the Scarlet Lake called a Dragonkin Soldier and I kept getting molested. Day 21, I'm still fighting this guy, this really sucks. Even after beating him and getting an okay amount of runes, I ended up losing them all by falling off this edge that I couldn't get back to. Whatever, man, I'm just gonna go fight the next boss. Are you having a bug problem? Specifically, a giant space bug problem? We'll have no fear because Choofy's here to take care of the problem with a giant goofy looking sword. After beating that guy, I found a lift that took me right back up to this spot in Lirinu of the Lakes. And then there was another glintstone dragon. How hard could this guy be? The answer is hard, very hard. Infuriatingly hard. Day 22, I finally beat the dragon after many a woe. Well, that's cool and all. Now it was time to continue on the story. I was back into the capital city of Leyendel where I killed this ghost made out of pee. If you think that giant looking axe is intimidating, wait till you see the real guy. Then I made a quick stomp by round table hold to get a very funny item that would make the next fight a bit trivial. Then it was on to the next shard bearer. Graceless tarnished. What is thy business with these thrones? Ah, Godric the Golden. The twin prodigies, Mikola and Melania. General Radan. Praetor Rikard. Luna Princess Rani. Willful traitors all. Thy kind are all of a piece. Pillagers emboldened by the flame of ambition. Have it writ upon thy meager grave. Felled by King Morgoth, last of all kings.
Allow me a moment. You are unable to enter the Erd Tree. Prevented by the mantle. The thorns are impenetrable. So I'd like you to undertake to the Flame of Ruin. Far above then. I can set and guide you. Down the path. E23, I departed to the next area, which this part of the game's really annoying. It's a really, really ridiculously long run without a grace in the middle. This run gets even more painful if you somehow manage to die in the middle of it, which I definitely didn't do. I don't know what you're talking about. But finally, I did reach the Forbidden Lands and got a grace. Hallelujah. I crossed the Forbidden Lands until I got to the Grand Lift of Rold, which I would need to access the next area. But I got attacked by a gargoyle. I do love me a good challenge, and even though it took a few tries, I managed to take down the Black Blade Kindred. It was a very close fight though. Now I was in the mountaintop of the giants, and after a bit of exploring, I found another catacomb. This catacomb was super confusing, but I eventually got it. I can't imagine anything that would make this section worse. Except that. I came across this scarab and got really bloodthirsty for whatever reason, but I ended up making a good choice here because I got a somber 8, so now I upgraded my Bloodhound Fang again. Day 24, I made my way towards another castle, and while I was on my way there, I came across a Deathrite bird. <laughs> what a goofy looking fella. I bet he isn't even hard at all. I am so sorry, I didn't mean it. And I finally made it to the base of the castle, which is an awful place, might I add. I love having the evil spirits of knights just pop right next to me when I'm trying to activate the great and then kill me when I'm right next to the grace. I hate this. I just, oh, oh, oh. Eventually, I finally made it to the boss fight in the castle, which is awful enough by its own. I'm only doing this to showcase what the fight actually looks like to you. The unfortunate part is I really need to kill this guy because I need to get the other half of the Halig Tree medallion and can't do it if he's not dead. Fortunately, there's a coward's way out of this, which is really funny, which of course means I'm going to do it. Watch and learn. Don't ask me how this works, I literally have no idea. Ah, all that hard work finally paid off. On day 25, I realized that I had access to the last person I needed to invade for Volcano Manor. Although at this point, I don't know if it really matters because, well, they're, uh, their leader's dead. I killed another Erd Tree avatar that could actually multiply itself, but that didn't really change the outcome of the fight. I went into another cave, and at the bottom of this cave there was a boss that was a spirit version of the Godskin Apostle. Once you kill him, a spirit version of the Godskin Noble appears. Then if you kill that, the snail that summoned both of them appears, and you beat the ever-living snot out of it. Then I continued up the mountain towards the Forge of the Giants, the giant bowl-looking thing on the horizon. Then it was time for the next main story boss. Not a shard bearer, but just as important.
can't tell you how long it's been since I first tried this boss. That was a good feeling. Then it was time to go on top of the Forge of the Giants, where Melano would ask me a very interesting question. Are you prepared to commit a cardinal sin? Uh, yeah? What kind of a question is that? O Erd Tree, you shall burn. Burn for the sake of the new Lord. Thank you for guiding me here. The one who walks alongside flame shall one day meet the road of destined death. Goodbye. I don't even know how to explain Fair Missoula. Like, it's just so weird. For starters, all I know is that I really, really despise these knights. They just suck. Then, if you escape the knights, you get to participate in the best FromSoft boss design ever. After this fight, I'm really starting to realize how amazing this weapon is. After that was a very awful, very terrible run where I had to dodge lightning and a bunch of birds. Now normally I love birds, but not these birds. These birds make me sad. I did manage to get my hands on an ancient somber dragon smithing stone, so I guess I can't complain. After I got the next important grace, I parkoured my way down this weird area thing. I don't know how to explain this. And then got prepared to fight another major boss.
On day 27, I went back down to Weeping Peninsula so I could visit this big walking bell tower thing. If you hit all the white crud off of its feet, it'll soon fall down into the ground, and then you can go inside and duplicate a remembrance. Remembrances are dropped by bosses, and you can use them to get weapons. I duplicated Radon's remembrance because that's the build I would be using for the next playthrough, so I was just kind of, I don't know, preparing in advance. I farmed some runes from my farming spot so I could buy the armor sets for both Radon and Renala, even though I never ended up using Renala's. And now it was time for the next major story boss fight, and I gotta say, this has got to be one of my favorites. Become my blade once more. The rune of death is unbound. And the lands between are shrouded by death's dark fate. But the flames will also burn the impenetrable thorns. It is then. You'll be Elden Lord yet.
I'm at this stage of the game where we pretty much only have story bosses to go through. The next one was this guy. Normally he's supposed to be a meme, but if he really gets going, he can be such a pain to deal with. He just spams and spams and does so much damage, man. Another huge portion of the day was actually spent farming more runes so I could get a bunch of smithing stones to upgrade some katanas for an upcoming very fun boss fight. While I was down farming runes in that bloody area, I also realized that I was strong enough to fight the shard bearer that was there, so that's what I went to go do. Mikola. <sighs> you must abide alone a while. Welcome, honored guest, to the birthplace of our dynasty. Moog was dead, I decided that I would go around and try clearing out as many bosses as I could before I went on to the final ones. I killed a lot. I killed a lot of bosses. I was way over leveled for all of them. Day 30, I was still knocking out more bosses, and this time I was in Kaelid. I spent some time trying to figure out how to solve this puzzle in a magical town right next to that rotten lake. Once I completed that, I headed up the hill and found another cave and got incredibly lost inside. This was so annoying, and I got low on heals by the time I found the boss, which ended up being three rotten crystallians. Oh boy. Somehow by the grace of god I managed to win that fight, but uh, I'm tired. Day 31, I finished the last couple of dungeon bosses in Kaelid, and then it was on to Mount Gilmere once more. I killed a couple of bosses there, and then visited the Mount Gilmere hero's grave once again. You remember the one from earlier that I was struggling with? I had plenty of health this time, so getting through it wasn't that big of a deal. Especially this section where the floor is literally lava. I mean, it wasn't really taking much damage, so I just kinda lazily rolled my way through it. I know there's another way, I just didn't want to figure it out. The boss went down pretty easily, but that's only because I was overleveled for it. 
Day 32 was pretty much nothing but dungeons. All of them are the same, you find the lever that opens the boss room, and then you just go to the boss and kill the boss. The only exception to this is Hero's Graves, which are three times the size and don't need a lever to open the door. Finding the door is hard enough sometimes. And the bosses weren't anything interesting either, I was over leveled for every single one. Day 33, it completed the last couple of Evergales on the map. I killed all the deathbirds I had except for one, who was in Consecrated, and then went to Consecrated. The only reason I could get to these snowfields though is because I took the two halves of the secret Halig Tree medallion and used them at the lift of Rold. Now it was time to start going through all the Consecrated catacombs and caves, and in my opinion these were way worse. I would end up going around in circles for like 15 minutes, or just getting my butt handed to. Day 34, I finished the catacomb but lost 120,000 runes in the process. That was, that was painful. I found another smithing stone cave that I didn't even know existed and killed Estelle 2.0, the big space bug from earlier. I got a pretty cool spell from him that I would never use. I killed another tree dude that was also in the area before going to the Ordina liturgical town. Here I have to enter an Evergale where I have to solve a puzzle by lighting four different flames so I can enter another area. Sounds easy enough, right? These archers hurt so bad, especially when you're wearing nothing but pants. After some suffering, I managed to light all of the flames and I could finally visit the Halig tree. No one here at the Halig Tree really seems to like my presence here, but that's okay because I don't like them either. Do you remember the ghost chick on a horse from Caria Manor? Well, here's the real version of her, and she's also not too bad, especially when you have a big old goofy looking sword. Then it was the run to the next rune bearer fight, and this one was going to be very interesting because I kept dying along the way. Some of it was my fault, other times it wasn't my fault. Then when I got to the bottom of the Halig Tree, it was now time to begin one of the most infamous boss fights in all of Soulsborne. I dreamt for so long. My flesh was dull gold, and my blood rotted. Corpse after corpse left in my wake. As I awaited his return. Heed my words. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. And I have never known defeat.
Wait. Crap, it always feels so good to beat her, especially when it takes you several in-game days to actually beat her. Using some of the runes I got from the fight, I went to go buy her armor as well as Malekith's armor. Not many interesting things were happening on day 38, just me clearing out the last few bosses I hadn't hit yet. I was struggling a bit to get this one to spawn for a while, but I finally figured it out after talking with the turtle at the Church of Vows. Day 39, I'm still clearing out bosses, but this time they're more difficult because they're the consecrated snowfield bosses that I missed. After I killed the last death bird on the map, I went down to the subterranean shunning grounds under Leyendel. This place is always a bit cancerous to me. It's just very confusing and hard to find your way around. Day 40, I found Moog's Shackle, which would have been funny if I actually used that during the fight with him, but oh well. I went through the last catacomb on the map, which was below the subterranean shunning grounds. So like a catacomb under the catacomb I was already in. It's confusing. That boss was also a pushover due to, you know, me being overleveled. And then I continued going even deeper. At the very bottom, I find this other version of Moog, I guess. I don't know why he's here, because I already killed him. And then it was on to the second to last story boss. Long and hard didst thou fight, tarnished warrior, spurned by the grace of gold. Be assured the Elden Ring resteth close at hand. Alas, I am returned. To be granted audience once more. Upon my name as Godfrey, the first Elden Lord.
that will be all. Thou didst me good service, Sirosh. I've given thee courtesy enough.
battle is over, I see. I do solemnly swear to every living being and every living soul. Now cometh the age of the stars, a thousand year voyage under the wisdom of the moon. Here beginneth the chill night that encompasses all, reaching the great beyond. into fear, doubt, and loneliness, as the path stretcheth into darkness. Well then, shall we? My fair consort eternal. With Brawny's questline complete, it was time to begin preparations for my next run. Day 42, it was time to start my next run as Radon. Margit and Godric were no match for me as I murdered my way through Stormvale Castle. But after Godric, I realized that I should probably go talk to Melina so I could actually level up again. Next up, I killed an invader and then talked to the guy who helps me kill him. His name is Yura and he has a very important mini questline that gives me a really good item. Day 15, it was on to Raya Lucaria. Here, I invaded an NPC's world and helped Yura kill some dude I didn't care about, and continued on my way where I'd proceed to beat the crap out of the dog and Ranala because they were no match for my gigantic swords. I then kicked some A and the ruin strewn precipice on my way up to Altus Plateau. And then, to my great sadness, I found Yura dying in a church. Eleonora. What, you lost to what a I've girl? Learned. No way, dude, the we're not friends so anymore. <laughs> Then it was back up to Mount Gelmir where I finally killed the Falling Star Beast. I also realized I forgot to kill him on the last playthrough, but who cares? I mean, if you do care, for the love of everything holy, touch grass. Day 44, I murdered everything and everyone in Volcano Manor. I thought it would be really funny to use Radon's bow on the Draconic Tree Sentinel, but he didn't seem to appreciate that too much. You didn't like the bow? Oh, you poor baby, I guarantee you'll like my swords even less. Now that I'm in Leyendel, it's time to continue murdering, I suppose. Yeah, New Game Plus goes crazy. Day 45, it was on to the mountaintop of the giants. I skipped the Commander Nile boss fight again and then went to go kill the fire giant. On to Fair Missoula. I'm going at an incredible pace. For the first time in this playthrough, I was struggling with a boss, but that's understandable because it's the Godskin duo. I did manage in the end to kill them, but it was very painful. Day 46, I first tried Malekith, which is really weird because I usually struggle with this boss. Hey, I mean, I'm not gonna complain. Now it's time to go get revenge on Gideon.
Then I was on to Godfrey. New Game Plus is crazy. It's been like four days. I did struggle with his second phase though with Horlo. It was just, uh, <laughs> stop. After I finally beat him, I went down to Redmain Castle because I nearly forgot the funniest boss of this whole playthrough. Day 47, it was Radon versus Radon and it wasn't even close. I am the true Radon now. For the rest of the day, I was invading people so I could make it to Moog. And let's just say Moog was kind of hard. I finally beat Mogi Poo on day 48 after many, many attempts. Then it was time to go kill Radagon and his dog. That's a dog, right? Then it was time to go to Consecrated Snowfield so I could do the Liturgical Town puzzle. As it turns out, these arrows don't hurt as bad when you're actually wearing armor. Day 49, when I finally got to the Halic Tree, it took a couple tries, but I finally took Loretta down. Now it was time to fight Melania again, which as it turns out, is a completely new kind of fight when you have a medium equip load. Then at one point, I got a bit antsy later in the day and decided to try out the Bloodhound Fang against her, and ended up first trying her. So no, I didn't beat Melania as Radon, I just beat her with Radon's armor on. Day 50 was mostly prep work for my Malaketh build because there was a lot I had to get. After respecking into a Malaketh build, I went to go get some incantations so I could do some of his abilities. But to do this, I would need Deathroot. A lot of Deathroot. The entirety of Day 51 was spent collecting Deathroot. Yep. That, that's it. That's all I did. Also, I should have said this earlier, but the Radon run there was the normal ending. The fallen leaves tell a story of how a tarnished became Elden Lord. In our home, across the fog, the lands between. Our seed will look back upon us and recall an age of fracture. Day 52, it was time to start my Malekith journey. After I killed Margit, I headed to Round Table Hold to talk to Fia because I would be getting her ending in this playthrough. Then I beat the ever-living crap out of Godric and started making my way towards Raya Lucaria. Day 53, I mowed my way through Raya Lucaria and then headed to Garia Manor, which I also mowed my way through. I got the grace in Ronnie's Rise before heading up to Volcano Manor and murdering everything there, which I forgot to record myself killing Riker, but you've seen it twice by now, so I'm sure it's fine. But then I pulled a Chufi again again on day 54 and forgot to record myself killing Radon. That was on to Leyendel, ran through it easy peasy and killed Morgoth. At this point I decided I would start cutting down my days in length because man, filling out 100 hours at this pace is gonna be brutal. A55, I went down the big hole in Limgrave to Noxtella where I was actually recording for the Mimic Tear fight this time. And of course you know I had to meme the crap out of it. I let him have nothing and flicked him around with this giant unleveled finger. It was definitely the funniest thing I've ever done in this game. Then it was time to go fight the Valiant Gargoyles. Now if you thought the Godskin duo was bad, this fight just actually made me angry. They are unrelenting, 
unfair, and most importantly, unsupervised. I want to talk to their parents. Then, finally, I managed to kill it. After all the pain with the poison tick damage, I killed them. Day 56, I took the Coffin Express down to the deep root depths. This is where I would have to finish Fia's questline, but before I could do that, I would have to kill her champions. Which, honestly, with Malakath's sword is just a meme. After they were killed, I went back up to the mountaintop of the giants and cheesed Commander Neil again. I, I was never gonna fight him if I didn't have to. Day 57, I killed the fire giant and went to Faramazula again, where I had... The Godskin Duo. I'm not even gonna lie, I had such a hard time beating these guys that I finally relented and decided to cheese them with sleep pots. I needed cracked pots in order to make them though, so I went to merchants to see if I could buy them. Day 58, it only took me one try to cheese the Godskin Duo with sleep pots. It was the first time I had ever done it, and I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty funny to see it in action. Then I decided I would go fight Dragonlord plus Citisax again, just for the runes. I was completely unaware though of how the special ability on Malekith's sword would absolutely melt his health. For the first time ever, I first tried Placidus X. That was a good feeling. But then it was Malekith time, and remember how I said I've struggled with him in the past? Well, the past is now the present because he still sucks. I would spend the next two days fighting Malekith, unsuccessfully. This was the most infuriating, annoying experience I've ever had with this boss. But at the end of day 60, I finally managed to take him down. Most of day 61 was spent fighting Sir Gideon Offnir, or should I say Sir Spams a lot, because that's literally all he does. After finally, finally killing Gideon, I would move on to Godfrey, and uh... Yeah, that was also painful. So I decided to put all that on hold and go back to the deep root depths to try and complete Fia's questline. Day 62, I had to do part of Ronnie's questline so he could get this thing called the Curse Mark of Death. This took most of the day, but when I finally brought it back to Fia, uh, there was another fight. I don't even know the lore behind this stuff. I know that there's just this big spooky dragon that I have to go beat the crap out of. It only took me a few tries, and once he was dead, it was time to go back to Godfrey. And as it turns out, a break is exactly what I needed because it didn't take me too long to beat him either. E63, I first tried the Radagon fight. I don't know why this fight comes easier to me, it just kinda does. Then it was time to go back to the Halig Tree, and I first tried Loretta. What a nerd. I also decided to explore a little bit more because my path through this place has always been really linear. I found an ancient somber dragon smithing stone, but there was a giant tree dude right next to it, and I tried to fight him, but uh, it didn't work. Day 64, Melania time! So as it turns out, Melania really doesn't like this special ability on Malekith's sword. For the first time ever in my life, I beat her within 10 tries. Again, that was probably more of the sword than me, though. Day 65, I got everything prepared for my Melania playthrough, and started the new journey. The Fallen Leaves tell a story of how a tarnished became Elden Lord in our home across the fog the lands between our seed will look back upon us and recall the age of the Duskborn. And I gotta say, this rot flower is better than I thought it would be, because it instantly seems to rot other things. And then after you rot something, you can just shred it to ribbons! E66, I started muscling my way through Stormvale. After I beat Margit, I went to Roundtable Hold so I could talk to this guy named Corin. Here I would begin a questline to get me the Golden Order ending. After I made an example out of Godric, I began making my way through Lyrnia. E67, in Raya Lucaria, I diced the wolf and Ranella to pieces. This rot flower also is just so funny. I explored the school a little bit more, even though any of the loot I got wasn't anything I needed. I was just kinda bored. A68 was spent in ruin strewn precipice and killing my car. Now normally this isn't anywhere near enough content to fill up a day, but like I said earlier, I kinda stopped caring, and plus this was a good stopping point so I could start the stream on day 69. Day 69 I was streaming as I tore my way through Volcano Manor. This is where I can continue the Golden Order questline because Corin is just kinda hanging out here in Altus. He's looking for a dude named Gold Mask, so once I go find Gold Mask, I go back to him and tell him where he is. Come <laughs> on, now they're buddies. I don't care. Then I murdered the Draconic Tree Sentinel in front of Leyendel to end 
the day. Day 70 was quite eventful. I beat the crap out of Piss Godfrey before finding Corrin and Gold Mask next to the giant Colosseum in Leyendel. I had to solve this puzzle that I definitely didn't Google the answer to. I don't know what you're talking about. I needed to cast a certain spell in a certain spot for a certain something to happen. But the only issue is I didn't have enough intelligence to use this spell. Fortunately though, I had a bunch of stuff that could boost my intelligence yes. stat and all I needed to do was grab one more tier that would give me an extra 10 intelligence when I drink it from my flask. Then I solved the statue puzzle and then went to go tell Gold Mask that I'm actually smarter than he is. Day 71, I continued on my way and slaughtered Morgoth. Then it was time to go fight Radon, but the nearest grace I had to his boss fight was incredibly far away. But killing Radon was pretty easy, so it was okay. Then it was time for the mountaintop of the giants again. Not much to say on day 72, I killed the fire giant, cheesed Commander Neil, and went back to Faramazula. That skin duo wasn't too bad this time, I think it's because I have a sword that moves a lot faster. It only took me a couple tries to beat them, and then it was on to Malaketh, who I somehow first tried. Then it was back to Leyendel when it was covered in ash, and I found Corin all sad. When I talk to him, he tells me that Gold Mask is actually a crazy lunatic and shouldn't have been following him around this entire time. Good job, dude. It's always good to get out of an abusive relationship. Then I went to go find Gold Mask's dead body, where I would get the mending rune so I could get the Golden Order ending. Then it was time for him again. Oh, oh, I did not miss you. Gideon, please, stop. I'm begging you. This is why no one loves you. After finally defeating Gideon by spamming him back, it was time for Godfrey again, and, uh, oh boy. All of day 75 was spent fighting Godfrey. Every time he phase transitions to Hora Low, it's just an inevitable ass whooping, I swear. After many, many attempts, I finally beat Godfrey on day 76, and the only thing I had time left for that day was to solve the Ordina liturgical puzzle. Nothing here but some Halic tree shenanigans on day 77. I beat Loretta after a couple tries and then headed to the Melania fight. This was gonna be interesting. Melania versus Melania. The next three days would just be Melania versus Melania. Let's go. Alright, so for day 81, don't get mad, but I may or may not have forgotten to record the Radagon fight. Honestly, I'm not too upset about this, you've seen me do it like three times already, so... The fallen leaves tell a story of how a tarnished became Elden Lord in our home across the fog. The lands between. Our seed will look back upon us and recall. The Age of Order. The entire day was dedicated towards getting ready for my Godskin Apostle playthrough. Once again, there was a lot I had to get, but it wasn't too hard to get, so I managed to get everything I needed before the end of the day. Day 82, I began the new journey as a Godskin Apostle. As per usual, I tore my way through Stormvale Castle, and then went to the Divine Tower so I could get Godric's Great Rune early on. Day 83, I rescued Alexander the Pot from the spot in the ground he was stuck in. I don't know why I did that, I guess I was just bored. I continued down to Redmain Castle. I know I couldn't fight Radon just quite yet, but I would at least have this grace right here so I didn't have to run back. Then it was time to commit war crimes in Raya Lucaria once again. Day 84, I made my way to Ulta's Plateau, and as soon as I got there, I traveled back to Kaelid and killed Radon. And it was time to enter Leyendel, so I killed the Dragon Sentinel. Day 85, it was time to go back to Volcano Manor. This time, I didn't want to go see Rikard in the normal way, I decided to do the little quest line they have there. In the first playthrough, I actually did the quest line already, so pretty much I was just invading the people I've invaded in the past. At one point in Leyendel, I duoed up with one of my fellow Volcano Manor friends, 
friends and we killed two other guys. After that, it was time to kill Piss Godfrey and I started fighting Morgoth, but for whatever reason, now I started dying to him. I finally killed Morgoth on day 86 and went back to Mount Gelmir and found Alexander the Jar next to a lava lake. This is where he gave me a Jar helmet. I would be needing that for the next playthrough. Then it was on to Mountaintop of the Giants again where I killed the last person I would need to kill to complete the Volcano Manor quest line. I talked to Lady Tanith and she sent me down to Reichardt's Boss Arena. Yeah, she wanted me to be eaten, but we both know that's not gonna happen. Day 87, I talked to a guy who looked like Yura from earlier in the video, but it was actually a different guy in Yura's body. He was pretty much telling me to go crazy and burn the entire world. So, I went to the Leyendel sewers to start looking for the subterranean shunning grounds. You know, they're a lot easier to find when the Ashen City is a thing, but before the Ashen City, finding the well is hard enough. Once I did find the shunning grounds, it took me forever to find my way down. Slightly faster than last time, but still a very long time. Day 88, I killed Sewer Moog, and now it was time for the last portion of the quest line. The idea is to bark goer all the way down this very, very deep chasm. I just had the worst time in the world doing it. It took me all day to finally reach the bottom. Now that I was at the bottom, though, it was time to inherit the Frenzied Flame. Day 89, I killed the fire giant and went to Fair Missoula, and then it was time to, uh, fight the godskin duo again. Yep, they were giving me grief. Day 90, I just gave up and then cheesed the godskin duo with the sleep pots again. Then it was time for Malekith, and for the rest of the day, he just kicked my ass. Fortunately, this didn't continue into day 91. It didn't take me too long to beat him. Gideon was once again an absolute piece of garbage, but I managed to finally beat him by spamming my black flame tornado attack. When I can pull the full thing off, it's really funny. It just throws him around. Now it's time to get beat up by Godfrey! Yippee! 892, I got through the liturgical town puzzle, the Halig Tree, Loretta, and the rest of the run to Melania in less than a half hour, which was really good because I'm running out of time. Also, I don't think I've ever had so much fun fighting Melania. I don't know, it's just a different beast with a pole blade. I was a little bit sad actually when I killed Melania on day 93. It's just by far the most fun I've ever had fighting her. Fortunately, I managed to first try Radagon because I was running out of time for a sixth playthrough. And now it was time for my favorite ending in the entire game.
Lord of Frenzied Flame. I will seek you as far as you may travel. To deliver you what is yours. Destined Death. With that done, now it was time to prepare for the very last build for my very last run of this video. This is the longest video I've ever made, so if you are still here, thanks so much for sticking around. I hope to see you in future videos. Hit like and subscribe too, or else I'll beat you up. <laughs>